All right, the next step about planning for an earthquake is just planning to be safe. How are you going to make sure that everything is going to be safe? So that could be with your family. When there's, when there's going to be an earthquake, you might not all be in the same room. Who knows where you're going to be in the house? So the first thing is make sure there's a plan that if there's dangerous, if there's an earthquake happening, first thing is you know you're going to stay in one place. And then once the earthquake is stopped and once it's safe to move, all of your family know you're all going to meet together somewhere outside, whether it's in the front yard, the backyard, somewhere that you all agree on that you know that, all right, no matter where you are in the house, you're not going to go running around looking for everybody else. You're all going to meet together outside. And that way, if somebody doesn't come outside, you know, oh, we need to go back in and look for them. They might be trapped or something like that. But you want to make sure that you all have a standard an evacuation plan. The same way we practice evacuating at school, does your family have a plan for how to evacuate? And that's something that everyone needs to talk about so that everybody knows no matter where they are, this is how we're going to evacuate the house. Um, and then also, during an earthquake or any kind of emergency, the local lines get really jammed. Because sure, if you're trapped in your room, you pick up your cell phone and try to call your brother or sister in the other room, that's going to end up all kind of focusing on the same cell network and the cell is going to get jammed. So people who really have a serious emergency are not going to be able to get through. And you just saying, are you okay? Are you okay? That's not going to work. So it's better if your whole family has a plan of somebody who lives far away, someone out of this region, so Northern California and another state, or however far away, you know somebody that your whole family agrees that, all right, we're going to call, we're all going to call grandma who lives in Wisconsin. We're all going to call grandma. And then so that way grandma's the one who's holding on to the information. So she knows that she's the one who's keeping track of how many family members she's heard from. So make sure that there's some plan for who are you going to communicate with that's far away. And then where are you as a family going to go during the, right after the earthquake happens to make sure you know that everybody came out safely. Um, and with this too, disaster supplies. Make, this is now the time ahead of time to plan what kind of disaster supplies you need. There's plenty of lists online. I'll put some links there too about what supplies you need to make sure that your house has at all times, just in case an emergency strikes any time. What do you need to make sure hasn't expired in terms of the food? So, and then making sure you know how to get to it. You're not putting earthquake supplies on a top shelf where it's going to be hard to reach if the shelf falls down or whatever it might be. So make sure that you have easy, easily accessible disaster supplies, all the tools you might need to shut off, your parents might need to shut off the gas or electricity or whatever it might be after an earthquake. So just planning ahead and thinking about really how would you turn off these things? How would you all coordinate together if there's an earthquake? So it's these kind of preparation, discussing it ahead of time is the most important thing to make sure that everybody stays safe.